So yes, those are recent pictures. The 170 gallon SPS tank is empty and gone. The corals all are sold. And the 25 gallon softy tank in the window has been taken down and sold, as well as the LPS Pico tank that is also gone. So yes, I got rid of almost everything in my tank and systems, but I am not out of the hobby, as you can see here, some blue light sneaking into the frames, but I am looking at selling my condo. And the last thing I wanna do is move three tanks. And I don't wanna move any SPS at all. So what's happening? There are some changes planned in the neighborhood. Um, I don't live in a residential zoned area, as you can see. It's zoned as mix, mixed zoning, mixed whatever. There's commercial, there's government, there's residential. Uh, so there's some things that are going to probably change in this neighborhood. It's nothing bad, it's just something we don't want to deal with. Uh, we love this place, but we always plan on moving to the suburbs at some point. So we're going to kind of jump to that a little quicker. Uh, the reason I sold the tanks is we need to stay in DC for at least another year. They have a lovely free pre-k3 preschool. We want to take advantage of that. Our plan is to move to Northern Virginia and I think they have free pre-k at four. So we're here at least another year and a half. So we're going to rent and I don't want to deal with a big tank in a rental. I broke everything down and just kept whatever I could fit in a 38 gallon all-in-one. So what I kept were softies. I love my leather corals and LPS. Basically things that are easy to keep or like the LPS softies that are harder to find. I had no problem getting rid of all my SPS. Oddly enough, I wasn't really attached to them. Maybe I kind of grew away from them as I had my issues earlier in the spring. Maybe I mentally prepared myself for not having those anymore. Even though there was some big colonies, none of what I had is rare or hard to find, so I should have no problem restocking in the future. Um, I do have some maize brains that is not something you find every day, and some of the softies which are harder to find. So I'm gonna keep those. That tank is looking phenomenal. I'll make a little video after I post this one about setting that tank up and my goals and vision on that tank. It's been a lot of fun filling in a smaller tank where I can just pack the tank, don't have to worry about things touching. And with a smaller canvas, I can really take advantage of every little nook and cranny. So that's been really fun. All of my equipment was sold that I don't need. All my SPS colonies, all my grow out tiles, uh, basically just want to keep whatever I can get in this 38 gallon. I still have a frag tank that I'm still trying to move some stuff locally. But what I did was I took all of that money, all that proceeds. I'm going to put it into a uh, S&P 500 ETF, let it grow, hopefully over the next year or two. And then I will have a nice cash reserve to get started again.
Here's a little retrospective on the three tanks, starting with the 170. The whole process of upgrading the Red Sea Reefer 450 to the 170 was pretty easy. The only thing I would have done differently is check the PAR right away. I ended up not testing for a while until I had some issues with some corals, and then once I finally did test the PAR, it was way higher than it was in the old tank. I'm talking like went from 250 to 300 up to like 450 to 600. So once I lowered that back down to the normal range, it was good. The Innovative Marine 170 EXT is a great tank and I would certainly use it again and recommend it. I think the dimension is good. I would have liked a little bit of a taller tank. I think it was 21 inches tall. Maybe up to 24 would have been great. As the corals grew up, I couldn't move the power heads up anymore, so I had to find new spots for them. So this tank only ran for about 18 months, and I would say I had really, really good Acropora growth for having a pretty low maintenance system. I think I attribute that to one is actively chasing my pH to at least stay above 8.1 at all times. And I noticed, I had a whole video on that, and I noticed that when I increased pH, alkalinity consumption would shoot up. The second thing is I did weekly water changes pretty religiously. As someone that doesn't do ICP testing and dose all the trace elements, I think that was very important in keeping all the elements in the tank stable. And the last thing, I didn't try a bunch of methods. I kind of stuck with what works for me. So there was not a lot of transitioning period between whatever the different method of the week was. I was pretty consistent with my feeding schedules, my water change schedules, my lighting schedules. I didn't tinker with stuff, so there wasn't a whole lot of change in the tank over the 18 months. This was the first tank where I was able to grow a lot of Acropora colonies to big sizes. Before, I either traveled too much to have a dedicated SPS tank, or I didn't stay in one spot long enough for an SPS tank to grow more than about a year. So a couple of my colonies got so big that when I sold them, they wouldn't even fit in five gallon buckets. And I had to give away a bunch of coolers because it was the only thing that they could fit in. I would say keeping a non-Acropora coral in an SPS tank is not easy. Not because they have totally different requirements. I think you can grow any coral in the same water as Acropora. It's more of that when you have a tank full of Acropora, you need a lot of flow and a lot of light and not every coral does well in a lot of light and flow. Sure, some SPS like torches can handle flow and can handle light, but I honestly think they do better in a lower light relative to SPS and a little bit lower flow. Some corals, they can adapt very well, like zoanthids can adapt to SPS conditions. Some of the maize brains I have did really well in high light and high flow, but most of your softies and LPS won't do as well. Sure, they'll survive, they'll grow slowly, but they're not going to thrive unless you find a place of low light and low flow in the tank. I will say that lighting, alkalinity, and calcium maintenance and nutrient control is pretty easy. I think the hard thing for an SPS tank is mastering flow. I mean, it would take me weeks to finally dial in the perfect flow, and then within a month, the acros grow more, and kind of fill in spaces and change the flow pattern and then you have to start over again. I've also learned that Acros can RTN very quickly due to flow changes, whether they block their own flow based on growth or after you change the flow in the tank, if the flow around a certain coral changes, it can die pretty quickly. And I don't think that's going from low flow to high flow. I think it was almost exclusively a coral that was in high flow moving to a lower flow situation. I think one way to tell long-term flow is if a coral grows longer, more spread out branches, it's probably in a lower flow environment. And then I had other corals that would grow very, very tight table-like structures where each branch was very close to each other, very thick. And that usually meant that it was in a high flow environment. So if you take a coral, that's very dense branches and move into a low flow environment, it's probably not gonna do well. So I'd say in the very short time, I had some moderate success. Um, I even had Vic and the WWC guys come out and film the tank, which was cool to have this tank on Worldwide Coral's channel. And I can honestly say this has been my most successful tank to date. This includes the coral from the Red Sea Reefer 450 that were transitioned over. So not all the colonies in this tank you know, started as a frag in the tank. Some of the growth has been about three or four years, but even the ones that were frags 
grew to pretty good sizes in about a year and a half. So hopefully in the future I will have some equally nice tanks or hopefully nicer. Uh, but for a short run I think this was a pretty successful Acropora tank. So the biggest thing I learned with the 25 gallon in the window is that most corals can adapt to intense sunlight. You know this tank got direct sunlight for maybe two to three hours in the summer to where I had to put the blinds down. The sunlight was great and it grew some of these leathers really really fast but not all the corals did well and I had to move some out of this tank or move them in a shaded spot and while some of these corals did grow very quickly in the sunlight, they didn't exactly have the best color. My red zinnia was more pink, and the blue zinnia looked like regular zinnia, and I think that was from the sunlight, because once I moved them back into a tank that did not get sunlight, they colored up within about a week to very, very deep red and very, very deep blue. Sunlight was great for growing them, but it did not bring out the best colors for them. The Pico tank was fun, but it was a real pain in the ass to maintain. Scraping the glass always meant spilling water. It took way longer to scrape out a four gallon tank than it did my 170, because you couldn't really miss anything without being noticeable. And I had to move basically the whole rockscape around to get to all the nooks and crannies. Yeah, I, I think it's fun as a short term project and using easy corals, but long term Picos are not that easy to, to maintain. The leathers did better than the LPS for sure. I think I had good growth with leathers in this tank on the first iteration. The LPS kind of survived and then towards the end when it got neglected they were starting to STN around the edges so a lot of those it took some time for them to recover after removing them from the Pico tank. So where am I going from here? I'm not getting out of the hobby. Um, this is just going to be a short lull for me. It's going to be nice having a small low maintenance tank for a while and then once we head out and buy a new place the plan is to have something that has a nice basement that i'll have to myself and then once that happens i'm going to probably go a little overboard with several systems in the future i'm sure i'm going to have tons of content on tank builds and all that kind of stuff but there's only so much you can do with a less than 40 gallon all-in-one so I'll have some stuff here and there. I actually have a few things I've been working on, just like quick how-tos that I'm gonna post. And then I'll probably cover the moving of the tank because it's set up here now for another you know, couple months. And then I'm gonna move it to wherever we end up. And then I think the real test is how long I'm gonna last with a single all-in-one. Buddy said I'll last six months, I guess we'll see. So this channel's not going anywhere. It just might get slow for the next year or two. And then I guarantee you it's gonna ramp up once I start building big tanks, big grow out systems, experimental tanks. I'm gonna be excited to have the room to do whatever I want and not have a frag tank under a tank that I have to get on my hands and knees to service. So I'll have some dedicated grow out systems, which is gonna be awesome. So. Stay tuned and uh, let me know if you have any questions and take care.